We are live. Hope everybody's having a great, what day is it, man? Friday. Hope everybody's having a great Friday. Whatever day it is, is right now. Wherever you at, you are right here. And as we get into this, um, if you don't know the routine, y'all don't know how things go here, I'm going to explain to y'all the program real quick. As you come in, you can shout yourself out in the comments section. You can choose not to. Either way, we still going to deliver the game. We still going to deliver the game the way that I am known to do, the way, I've built, the way I have built the reputation for doing. So as y'all are checking in, my name is Dre Baldwin. I'm going to introduce myself formally in a moment. So as y'all coming in, again, shout yourselves out, and we're going to get into this, and then we're going to you know, do what we got to do. We're going to take about 30, maybe no more than 30 maybe 40 minutes at the most here today. So I hope everybody's having a great Friday. You've had a great week. We are live from, as you can see there on Periscope here on my left, Facebook in the middle, IG on my right, live at Penn State University. There's that Penn State right there for Facebook. Penn State right there. We're in a, I'm in an Airbnb right now. And it's a very beautiful Airbnb. So y'all follow my Instagram story. I'll give y'all a tour of the house after this uh, live is over. So before the end of the day, Y'all will get a tour of this Airbnb, and it is fire. But anyway, as y'all checking in, uh, we're going to get into the material real quick because we got other things we need to be doing today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. I'm a former nine-year professional athlete and author of 27 books. I have done four TED Talks. I got a whole lot of content on the internet. You can Google me, and you can do your own research on that when this is over. But what you should know about me is that this whole philosophy is all about taking the mental, mental game tools necessary to succeed in sports and teaching y'all how those tools apply in business and life. Mozart Gates, what's going on? You had the first comment. Ryan from Virginia again. Anybody who wants to shout themselves out in the comment section, I'll shout you out. And I'm going to address all questions and all that at the end of the live here today. Ryan Reyes checking in from what country is that? Reyes? Is that Puerto Rico? Shout out to Ryan, whatever country that is. You, people be posting the flags, man. Only flags, that, only right. I only know the USA flag. That's the only country I lived in. I mean, I've been in other countries. I recognize a few actually. That one, I'm not sure. A lot of countries use that red, white, and blue scheme, Ryan. So I don't know which one that is. I think that's Puerto Rico, but I might be wrong. So you let me know. But anyway, today we are doing part two of two. As I already told y'all, it's coming. Yesterday was part one of ten life principles that I was sharing. These principles apply across the board and anything that you're doing. This whole brand that I made is all about taking those tools and applying them to life. I'm always going to give you the truth. I'm going to give you the real. I'm going to give it to you objectively. I'm going to give it to you in a way that you may not want to hear it, but in a way that you need to hear it that's going to help you take your game where your game needs to go. Everybody understand that? Good. Now let's get into point part two of two. I'm giving you points number five, six, seven, eight, nine. I already did five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Of life principles, but I'll just call them one through five here. All right, so I did five yesterday. I'm doing five here today. Point number one, I'm giving you 10 life principles. Number one, stop getting scared out of your own life. This is something that all of these points are interconnected. But getting scared out of your own life is a situation where an individual has something that you want to do, something that you wish to achieve, something that you believe you can accomplish. But before you even get started, or maybe once you have gotten started, you start trying and you're not getting results immediately. Things are not working out the way that you want them to. You run into someone who has tried to do that same thing. They fail and they give you the story of how they fail. So now you start thinking that you're going to fail. You're an athlete playing a sport and you see another athlete who's better than you get injured playing the sport. And now you're afraid to play because you think you might get injured because they got injured. Or, you know, someone who started a business and they lost all their money and went bankrupt and their wife left them. Now you think that's going to happen to you. So now you're hesitating to even start your own business. Basically, you're driving with that emergency break on because you've gotten scared out of the things that you could have achieved in your own life simply because you're looking at what happened with everybody else or what might happen to you or just just general anxiety that you have about life, just general fears that you have about life. Now, I got plenty of material that will help you with this. First of all, my book, The Mirror Motivation, which I'll tell you about later, my Bulletproof Mindset course, my 30 Days of Discipline course, my mental workbook, a whole bunch of other things, my book called 25 Reasons to Quit Worrying, all of these things I got that will help you with these things. But the first thing you need to understand is that this is a problem, because if you don't recognize it as a problem that needs to be uh, handled, then you wouldn't even be concerned with any of the materials that I just listed. You can't allow what happened to somebody else or what even has happened to you in the past or what you think might happen to you scare you out of doing what you need to do and being who you need to be to get to your outcomes in life. Do not allow your general anxieties or fears or your real anxieties or fears. Maybe 
just revisiting a situation that really did happen to stop you from moving forward in life. Right? Life is always moving forward. Life never moves backward. The earth is never going to stop and start spinning around the opposite direction. All right? Night doesn't come in the, you don't get night at 7 a.m. and then dark. I mean, what am I saying? Night at 7 a.m. and then daylight at 8 o'clock p.m. Doesn't work that way. Uh, maybe in Alaska or something like that. But in most places, you get morning, you get daylight, and at night, you get darkness. That's the way that it works. The earth is not going to go the opposite direction. You're not going to get winter, then fall, then summer, then spring. It goes the opposite direction. So since the world is always moving forward, even if things haven't always worked out for you exactly as planned or expected, that doesn't mean that you give up on continuing to move forward. Because in the long run, what you expect in life, you are going to get. Now, it doesn't mean every time you try something, your expectation is going to be exactly what happens. Nobody's perfect. But in the long run, you will always get what you expect in life. Point number two. Today's topic, we have life principles, points number five, no, points number six through 10. I did five yesterday, if you didn't see that live. It's on whatever platform you watch me on, it's still on there. Point number two, get a vision that you actually believe in. This is an important one right here, because a lot of people talk about visualization and you know having your vision boards and having your goals and these things you wish to accomplish, and all of that is all good. But if you have a vision that you claim is your vision, you claim this is your goal, this is the thing you say you wanna do, but you don't actually believe it. You don't actually believe you can achieve it. You don't actually believe that you can do it. Does it really matter? Does it really matter that you have that as a vision? No. Is it really a vision if you don't believe it? No. All right, vision is something that you can actually see. You can actually feel within yourself. You can't see or feel yourself getting to that outcome. That is not a real vision, okay? I don't care how many vision boards you made. I don't care how many motivational speeches you have attended. I don't care how many seminars you signed up for, how many YouTube videos you downloaded to your phone. If you cannot actually see yourself achieving outcome X, then that is not your real vision. Your vision needs to be something that you really believe that you can actually do, you can actually get to, and can actually be tangible in your life. Because a lot of people have a lot of things that they talk about doing or think about doing or write down on, a, on their goals or in their journal or whatever it is you got going on. If you don't actually believe it, it is never going to happen. So what is the vision that you really believe in that you really, you really know you can get to with the proper effort, with the proper information, with the proper amount of time investment, uh, what do you think you can really get to? And you can expand your vision anytime that you want to. I got a book called The Mental Workbook that'll help you with that. Also my book, Work On Your Game, will help you with that as well. I got that book right here. This book, Work On Your Game, will help you with that as well. But you gotta have a vision that you can actually believe in. If you don't actually believe in your vision, then it doesn't really matter. It's not really truly a vision. Find something you believe in. Point number three. Topic here today is life principles. I'm giving you five more. Yesterday I gave you five. Today I'm giving you five. Number three, become aware of your habitual thought patterns because they control your life. What does this mean? 85% of our thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, as I discussed in this book right here, work on your game. I'll tell you how to get this later. 85% of your thoughts are habitual and unconscious thoughts, meaning you're not even thinking about the fact that you're thinking about them. These are thoughts that are running in the just the unconscious, subconscious level of your mind, even when you're not consciously thinking about anything. And these thoughts, being that they're 85% of your thinking, only 15% of the things that you're actually, you can identify that you're thinking about them, these 85% control your life. They control who you are. They control how you move about. They control your unconscious behaviors. They control... Uh, how you perceive the world. They control how you respond to things instinctively. Most of our responses in life are instinctive. We may not be aware of them, but that's, what, that's why they're instinctive. They control this. These 85% thoughts control the majority of what's going on in your life, whether it's something that you want or something that you don't want. The 85% is controlling your life. Therefore, if you look at your life right now or any aspect of your life and it isn't looking the way that you want it to look, here's one place that you really need to focus on. What are my unconscious thought patterns around this particular aspect of my life? What am I thinking about when it comes to here? And you, again, your question is my unconscious thought patterns. So be, be clear of what I'm saying here. I want to make sure y'all catch what I'm saying. For you to become aware of your unconscious thought patterns, you have to start getting conscious about the thoughts that are streaming through your mind at all times. Not just the thoughts that you know you're thinking, but the ones that you don't know you're thinking. You got to start thinking about those so you can identify them, see what's going on so you can fix things. It's kind of like if something goes wrong in your house, something goes wrong with the plumbing 
in your house, you may never have really thought about you know, the pipes or the way the system was laid out or the drainage or any of that because it's hidden beneath the baseboards or it's inside the, the insides of the house that people don't see unless you tore the house apart or it's buried underneath the ground out in the backyard and you never paid any attention to it because it was working fine. But as soon as that drainage system is not working and the pipes are clogged up and you're not getting any hot water and you're wondering what the hell is going on, now you got to go look through those pipes and see what's going on or you got to hire somebody who can do it, right? It's the same way that you look at your unconscious thoughts. It's like the piping system of your brain that you can't see. Like in this house right now, there's a piping system, a drainage system, a heating system, an electrical system, but I can't see the wires. I can't see any of the pipes and I don't want to because if I can see any of that stuff, that means something is wrong. All right? I don't want anything to be wrong. And since I don't own this house, I will never have to deal with that. And if something does go wrong, we make a phone call and they come fix it. The whole point is you are the owner of your mental house. So if you realize that there's some aspects of your life that are not going the way that you want them to go, here's what you must immediately do. You got to start tearing, tearing the walls up and you got to look at the piping. You got to look at the drainage system and ask yourself, all right, what's going on here? How, where is this connected to this? How is this connected to that? How, why am I getting this result in this area? And you got to keep digging until you figure out what the problem is. Because until you fix it, you will continue having the same problems over and over and over again. So again, if there's an aspect of your life that is not looking the way that you want it to look, the question you ask yourself is, what are the unconscious thought patterns, the ones that I'm not aware of, that I have around surrounding this aspect of my life? You will not become aware of them until you start actually consciously looking for them. All right? As they say in life, seek and ye shall find. What you look for, you will find. What you don't look for will remain completely uh, oblivious. You'll be oblivious to it. It will be invisible to you. You will never find it because you're not looking for it. So become aware of what your unconscious thought patterns are. They are controlling your life. So every aspect of your life where things are going great, say, all right, what are my unconscious thoughts around that? And then take the same answers that you get from there. Use that as a framework for the areas in your life where things are not going the way that you want and apply that same framework. Again, may not be the exact same tactics, but the same framework and the same strategy for the area that's working. Apply it to an area that's not going the way you want it and you can get that fixed faster than you probably think but you must be aware of your unconscious thoughts so if you find yourself not winning right now in life it's because of your unconscious thoughts if you find yourself winning it's because of your unconscious thoughts and in the long run you will get what you think all right as earl nightingale said in stranger secret back in the 50s or 60s whenever he recorded that you become what you think about even if you don't know that you're thinking about it you will become what you're thinking about so if you want to know what you're thinking about the things that you might not even know you're thinking all you gotta do is look at your life your life will tell you what you have been thinking for the last 5, 10, 20 years. Your life right now that you can see with your eyes is a direct reflection of the thoughts that you have been thinking up until this point. If you want to change your life moving forward, change your thoughts moving forward. Point number four. Today's topic, I'm giving you five more life principles. I gave you five yesterday. I'm giving you five more today. And these apply for any person, any age, any gender, no matter what you're doing. Number four is don't be an asshole. Now, what exactly does this mean? Now, because people throw this word around, right? We use this in different ways at different times, depending on who we're talking to. Anybody ever seen the movie Scarface? If you didn't see the movie, even if you did, I'll explain really quickly why I'm asking about Scarface. In that movie, there was a scene with this guy named Tony Montana, who was the, the star of the film. He was this big time you know, drug dealer. One of the first big, according to the movie, this is not a, it's based on a, a fictional, it's a fictional story. He's a big time drug dealer and he's inside of this restaurant and his woman had just cussed him out in front of everybody. So everybody in the restaurant is just sitting there staring at him and he's kind of drunk and high. And he's walking around, pacing around the restaurant. Everybody's just looking at him, not knowing what to do. And they all kind of know who he is and they're kind of intimidated by him, but they're all like just in shock and awe. And Tony starts giving a speech while he's under the influence. He says, you all pointing to the other people sitting around the restaurant. He said, you all are a bunch of fucking assholes. You know why? This is Tony talking. He said, because you don't have the guts to be who you want to be. And then he said, me, I don't have that problem. And now I'm out of the Tony speech. I'm telling you not to be the asshole that Tony Montana was referring to in that restaurant scene in the movie Scarface and have the guts to be who you want to be. A lot of people don't just have, a lot of people just don't have the heart. They scare themselves out of their own lives, like I told you already. They drive around the life with the emergency brake on, as I talked about last night in yesterday's live, and they just don't have a heart. They don't have a heart to go after what they really want. They see what they really want. 
They are aware of what they really want. They know at least vaguely what steps need to be taken to achieve what they really want, but they are unwilling to go after and get what they really want. Not because they have no skills, not because they have no, uh, not because they have no talent, not because they have no information, not because they have no, I don't even know, whatever else you think that people need in order to become successful in life, they don't go after it because they just don't have the heart. They just don't have the guts. They don't want to go after it and they become the asshole that Tony Montana referred to. And I'll address all questions at the end. I got one more point and then I'll address any questions that anybody has. So if you got a question about anything I said so far, go ahead and post it and I'll address it after I do number five. Point number five, today's topic is life principles points number six through ten so if you missed the first five that was in yesterday's live the fifth one reality is fully negotiable so when many people talk about reality i say this many times i talk about it in my book work on your game that many people when they talk about reality what are they saying they're saying i need to take whatever i believe right now and i need to take my ambition from up here at a level 12 i need to lower it down to a level nine or from a level four and lower it down to a level three this is what most people do when they're talking about being realistic or when they're talking about reality. But what you need to understand is that reality is fully negotiable, meaning you can change your reality anytime that you want, right? You can change your reality from what it is right now. Your reality is I haven't achieved this thing or I haven't had the guts or I haven't gone as far as I want to go. And then you can change that reality to, you know what? I am going to go there because I'm going to take this, some steps right now. I'm going to get the information right now. I'm going to be actionable on this. I'm going to take personal initiative. I believe in myself. I'm going to stick to the disciplines. I'm going to achieve the outcomes that I want to achieve. When we use the word realistic, often we're using it in a negative way. I think everybody here can understand that. I think many people who are listening to me, you probably done it to yourself. You said, all right, I'm going to be realistic about this thing. And usually that meant lowering. I never hear somebody say, no, I, I, I'm aiming for a level two, but I'm going to be realistic. And I'm going to aim for a level seven and go a little bit higher. Nobody does that. Most people choose to use reality, quote unquote, to think smaller. Since 95% of people, I would say that's being generous, probably 99% think like this. You succumb when you succumb to this whole concept of reality. All you're doing is making yourself just like them, which number one, puts you in a crowd of a whole bunch of people where you're not going to be able to stand out. And number two, makes you just like everybody else, which uh, why would you stand out? If you're just like everybody else. Why would you stand out if you're lowering your ambitions from a level 10 to a level seven? That's not going to help you get anywhere. It's not going to bring you fulfillment in life. It's not going to get you where you want to go. It's definitely not going to stop you from being guilty of being an asshole that Tony Montana talked about that I said in point number four. What you need to do, as I told you already in one of the earlier points, is you got to create a compelling vision for yourself that jumps you out of bed, maybe literally or at least metaphorically. A compelling vision, meaning something that you see yourself doing, you see yourself achieving, you believe, you reasonably believe you can achieve this thing with the right amount of information, action, knowledge, talent, etc., whatever it's going to be. And then you actually are willing to go after it. You're willing to take steps to get there. So you're not being an asshole, like Tony said. You're not driving with the emergency brake on, like I talked about yesterday. You have a vision that you actually believe you can achieve. All of these things, when you are applying these principles, as I've talked about, again, some yesterday and some here today, you can get to what you want to get to. You can become the person that you want to become, and then you become the person that other people will be inspired by. So you can become the person that... No, Tony Montana wasn't even a real person, but people still use the examples of some of the things that he represented, even though he was a, a drug dealer killing people. They use some of the examples that he represented because of the way that he was thinking. He was willing to go big. He was willing to go after what he wanted and become the person that he wanted to become, even though he may have had some. You no, know, even though ethically, he probably doing some things that most of us probably wouldn't want to do. But what is that compelling vision for you? You got to speak it to yourself. You got to see yourself actually becoming it, speaking into existence. And when I say speaking to existence, I'm not just talking some um, stuff, some fairy dust stuff that you pull out of the sky. What I'm saying is I got a book called The Mental Workbook, which will actually show you how to speak these things into existence, literally speak them into existence. First, you got to write them down. First, you got to think them. Then you write them down. Then you can speak them into existence. Then you actually take the steps to get there. All right. That's the part that a lot of people leave out when they're telling you any of this motivational hype up stuff about getting to what you want to get to in life. You have to actually do some things to get it. First 10 minutes, last 10 minutes of every day, I talk about this in my book, The Mental Workbook. I'll tell you about that in a moment. Now, after all that being said, I'm going to tell you about my book, The Mirror Motivation, which as I told y'all yesterday, I don't even have it with me. I didn't bring it with me on this trip, but I'm gonna show you the webpage for Mirror Motivation, how to get this book free. This is the first book of mine you should start with. Then I'm gonna recap my points and then I'm gonna address the questions in the comment sections, if we have any. So I'll see if we got any. So anyway, 
This book right here, The Mirror Motivation, I'm just showing you the website. I'll just pull up the picture of the book. Is right here. This is my first book that you should start with. Uh, a lot of people ask me, Dre, you got all this material, all this content, all this stuff. Where do I begin? What's the first thing that I should go to? And it's good that I'm showing you my phone because this is where you're going to go. On your phone, as soon as this live is over, go to mirrorofmotivation.com and you get this book, The Mirror Motivation. The book is free. All you do is cover the shipping. And the reason why you start with this book is because anyone who's listening to me right now, you have goals, things that you wish to achieve in life, and you understand that you got to do some work. You got to put some effort in to achieve your outcome. You're listening to a guy who has work on your game, on his shirt and on his hat. And I just showed you the book. So, of course, you're willing to do the work. The challenge is many people never ask themselves, who do I need to be? Who is a person do I need to be and stay in order to do the things necessary to get my outcomes? Because everyone listening to this here has at some point in your life been doing all the right things, or at least what you thought were the right things. And you had the right plans and you had a goal, but you weren't getting any results. Why is this? Even though you're doing everything right. And most of the time when people do this, since they don't know how to diagnose their problem, and this is another issue that people really mess up in their lives, they have a problem, but they think they have problem A when it's actually problem Z or G or F, is that you have not asked yourself, who do I need to be? What type of person do I need to be? What kind of energy do I need to have? How do I need to approach life? How do I need to see myself in the mirror? These are the things that determine how your actions produce results or what results are produced by your actions. This book right here, the Mirror of Motivation, which you're going to go get for free by going to mirrorofmotivation.com. I'll pull it to the top of the page so I can see what it looks like. When you get there so you know what you're looking at, mirrorofmotivation.com. When you go here, all you got to do is put your shipping information in. You cover the shipping, small shipping charge. We ship the book to you worldwide, anywhere that you live, so that you can get yourself into the right state of being. This is the way that you see yourself. Then take the same actions as before. You will get a completely different set of results. That's the mirror motivation. Now, after you put your info in to get that book, on the next page, we're going to make your offer to get this book and my book, The Mental Workbook, which I just mentioned a moment ago. This plus that one is called The Mental Game Advanced Bundle. This is the only one I got with me, so I'm only showing you this one. Mental Game Advanced Bundle will show you an offer to get that. So then you can get also the Bulletproof Bundle on the first page. So you can walk away from this whole thing with eight books when you go through the whole funnel. And again, it's all automated, so you don't have to worry about how do I get the other one, the other one, the other one. Just go to mirrorofmotivation.com, follow everything you see on the screen, and then we will show you exactly what you can get, what options you have, all of that, mirrorofmotivation.com. All that being said, let me recap these points quickly, then I'm going to address these if we have any questions. So if you got a question about anything I've talked about here, make sure it's short to the point and relevant to the topic. Go ahead and post it in the comments section. And let me recap these points. Life principles, part number two of two. Number one, stop getting scared out of your own life. Number two, get a vision that you actually believe in. Number three, become aware of your habitual thought patterns. Number four, do not be an asshole like Tony Montana said in Scarface. And number five, remember that reality is fully negotiable. All that being said, I got a few minutes to take questions and then we will wrap this up here on this Friday. Hope everybody's had a great Friday. Hopefully, Somebody who's listening to this got some useful, uh, valuable information out of what I talked about. T Mamba says, how come you never became a successful basketball player if you're so motivational? T Mamba, what's your definition of successful? And maybe you don't know my maybe you don't know as much about my background as I know, but I played professional basketball overseas for nine years. Wrote about it in this book right here, T Mamba. So whatever you consider to be successful, uh, tell me what's successful and what's not. <laughs> I think maybe you don't have as much info as you think. You said, I'm not trying to hate. It just seems like you stopped playing. Well, how can it seem like? T-Mom, I'm on, I'm on the internet every day, doing a live every day. I've had a master class every day since 2016. I publish content every single day on the internet since 2005. So if you don't have any information about me, I think that's a challenge on your part, not a challenge on my part. But I think you are misinformed anyway. So I think that was the only, yeah, was the only question that, that we got here today. So... Hopefully this information was just so good and nobody else has a question. But anyway, mirrormotivation.com is where anybody can go. Somebody says, somebody asking me a question that has nothing to do with what the, with the topic here today. Money made, you got to get better at asking questions. I mean, you always try, but you you shooting about 10% on asking me a good question. Anyway, everybody, mirrormotivation.com is where you get the book. Get the book. I got to call it. I got to get on in a moment. So I hope everybody has a great Friday. I will do a live tomorrow. I don't know when or what it's going to be about, but y'all can check in. If you so choose, if you choose to do something else, hopefully it's making you better. Work on your game. Everybody have a great weekend. We out here. Dre all day.